mostly just pulling stuff. I think I've happy thoughts the whole time. Oh, uh, so right. we're gonna do something that'll be time efficient. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, and I gotta give credit to the dude. So we're gonna do a lot of cluster work slash mile wraps. You ever done mm. dog crap? I have. Right. So yeah, this is hurts, this is yeah. it's like refined dog crap. Oh no. Do you know where dog crap came from? Uh, I forget the guy's name. Uh, Dante. Dante. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trudell, he owns True yeah. Nutrition or whatever. He used to own it or whatever. I think, that, right? that, yeah, that's old yeah. school too. But yeah, that he, guy was fucking big. He was he was smart as can be. Yeah. So yeah. he was he was a sharpie. But we're gonna kind of take a little bit of that. And Dog crap. What a great training. <laughs> well, someone was routine. asking him, like, what do you call this? And he's like, he's like, why is, does everything have to be named? So he's like, Dog crap. And that's that's where that came from. Um, there we go. But uh, so some some dude. Some really smart dude out there in Norway. Um, I'm gonna say his name wrong. It's a mm. name from way out there. So, uh, Berga. Berga. I think I got it. So Borg or Berga, but mm. I, I'm not gonna even try to say the last name. But this dude came out with a system called Myo Reps mm. uh, a few years back, and it's a great way to get time efficient hypertrophy work. Mm. And I think it's relevant for people who, like, if you're someone like me who's been training long enough yeah. where like you need a ton of volume in order to progress um, this system lets you get in that volume in a very time efficient way and then also for like say power lifters so power lifters who you know you're so beat up after you do all this big stuff yeah. and it's hard to get to that this is a very time efficient way of getting the volume you need in order to grow the the, the armor i guess you think it's really important uh, that you're um that you get in a lot of work in X amount of time, like you think the time is a really big crucial element to bodybuilding? Ooh, okay, so you know, we hear time under tension, mm -hmm. and I think that's that throws people off because I think sometimes they think like slow down the concentric, like yeah, do this and do that. Slow, yeah. But I mean, look at your hamstrings, man. Those were built with sets that were like, how long did they last? Not very long, right? So why is this guy checking out my hamstrings? <laughs> <laughs> I put the Craigslist ad, you didn't respond. But, uh, <laughs> But with time under tension, what it actually means is more so um, tension that, that means a damn. So, for example, um, with a 10 rep set, like traditional bodybuilding work, yeah. right? You know how the first like five, six reps, you can actually talk to someone. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's like whatever. And Not that's too hard. Yeah. It's, it's nothing, right? And it's once you get past that point that all muscle fibers are firing. And the ones we are targeting primarily is the fast switch muscle fibers. Those are the, those, those are the ones that have the most potential to grow. Those are the ones that... that you know, have the biggest potential to move the biggest loads. Those right. are the ones that we want to fatigue. So it's having those muscle fibers be exposed to tension. And yeah. the more trained you are, the more you're gonna have to tickle those muscle fibers. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna find a way to basically we stay that feather. to stay right there in that <laughs> zone. You know, to have reps that like only matter. Yeah, and I think that something that's probably missed too is is the multiple sets. Yes. So you know, the weeder principles of three sets of 10 yes. or a lot of bodybuilders are in a three to four set range. And obviously you can do more sets, mm -hmm. but set number one, where you're doing a set of 10, yes. might be, like you said, it might be fairly easy. The first yeah. five, six, seven reps, maybe even. Uh, as you get into set number two, set number three, set number four, that's where a lot of the muscle growth might really be happening because now rep number four, five, yes, six, like yes, they yes. all get to be hard yes. because the rest period is kept, uh, you know, to, to a moderate level, whatever your fitness level is. You know, some people can really race through it and get a great workout. Other people have to take a little bit more time, but uh, that's the hardest part for me as a yeah. power lifter is, is to come back and, and repeat and repeat and repeat and to go through that burn and to like block it out because we're not used to, um, it, we're not used to not only not going to failure, but we're not used to really having that burn in the muscles mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. And today what we're gonna do, we're gonna find a hack basically with, with myo reps where you're staying in that sweet spot for an extended period of time. And instead of doing, say, five sets of 10, you do one activation set, and then you do all these little clusters afterwards. And it has the same net value in terms of like muscle stimulus for muscle growth than doing five sets of 10. So you just cut down, instead of doing five sets of 10, you know, it might have taken you, I don't know, like anywhere between 12, 15 minutes. Well, now you're gonna be able to do that in three, four minutes and you're done. Mm. And you can, because of this, you can fit in more volume if you're like me and you just have a higher I'm nervous. My heart just fell down into my stomach, I think. But, but <laughs> you, can, you can enjoy this, like, you know, especially when you get in deep into this stuff again. Yeah. You're, you're going to be able to get in there and you're like, all right, the work that I need for muscle growth, it's going to take me, you know, a quarter of the time. Um, because, you know, he's a natural bodybuilder and I'm maybe the opposite of natural, I guess you'd say. 
I decided that for today, I'm going to party like him. So I didn't take anything today. No steroids for today. But we injected him earlier with 2,000 milligrams of testosterone. And just for all you people on the interwebs over there, we also hit him up with some trend. So he's going, he's going dirty. He's riding dirty today. I'm going all natty. Let's see what happens. It's just one day, though. It's just one day for you, bro. Thanks. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Where do you want to start out, buddy? Let's start off with... Uh, we'll do some pull downs. I think that's, that's uh, all right. No, you got these. These are legit. You know what I like about these? They work really well because they put your wrist. Like we always think of wrist position when we're like pressing and how important that is. When you're pulling, it's kind of the same thing. Like you want a straight wrist. And what this kind of does is it just keeps you in a straight wrist. So it locks you in. You're able to really yank with, with the right parts. Whoa. So these are legit. Yeah, any, uh, any of those little tips that you have for us, that would be great because I know that you got like particular ways that you like to row and particular ways that you like to do stuff. And like, I, 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 don't, know, I don't know any of this stuff, so I'd love to, love to learn. <laughs> these right here though, these are, yeah. these are magic. Mm -hmm. All right, so we get a few warm ups in and then We'll get to the work and wait. Uh, eventually, we want to get to something that we can do for about Why 10 minutes. Tell these reps. people who you are because I think they just think they think I just picked somebody up, uh, <laughs> a transient uh, in South Sac, you know? Some Mexican dude from off Franklin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was outside the Home Depot. I was like, yo, man, <laughs> you got to hit this up. Weed. You're like, what? <laughs> I do, but. Tell these people what's up. Um, so, Berto Nunez, natural pro bodybuilder. Um, <laughs> that's the, the size issue that I have. But, uh, but man, uh, I know a few things at this point, man. I've been doing it for a while, and, you know, relatively as healthy as you can. You know, you do anything hard for it. Yeah. This is year 20. Well, you've been coaching thousands of people. You, yep. you work for a reputable, yeah. reputable company that's helped thousands of people. Yeah. I think we the and, best, man. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, there you go. That's how it is, man. That's yeah. the way you should think, right? So we, 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 we're competitive in everything, and yeah. yeah, no, we get the job done, man, so. There you go. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get the job done, so. All right, what do you want me to start out with here, buddy? Just, uh, just, Get a, get a just start get moving some, around. Yeah, just get some blood in there. Hi. Oh, back is cracked. Chiropractic. Ninety-eight. Ninety-one underwear, dude. No undies. Got these Lulus, buddy. <laughs> Make me feel fresh. <laughs> I actually think that if men. You know, we're allowed, like if it was acceptable for men to wear women's underwear, that like there would be no war and there'd be less fights and less aggression. You ever feel those, you ever feel those underwear on you? I, the I, silky, silk, those silky panties? I, I, I couldn't start a fight with anyone if I knew I had those underwear. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, man, they must feel magnificent all the time. All right. well, you're, Here we are dealing with old cotton and shit. So we with the pull downs, you. What, what we want to do is we want to lead with our scapula. So mm -hmm. what I like to do to kind of get into the groove for the first few ones, I'll just kind of roll my scapula up and then down. So just kind of ah. do this thing. And then, you know, eventually you see that it kind of opens up and you're able to like get more mobility back there. So the beginning portion of the pull without really much bend in the yes. elbow. Yes. So it's your, you know how when you squat your hips kind of break first when you're doing a low bar? It's kind of with, with any kind of rolling motion, it's this that leads and then the rest of you kind of follows through. And you'll ah. see. You guys catching that? Seeing how he's doing that? At first, honestly, it, you're gonna have to like lower the weight a bit, but then because the stuff back there is just so much stronger than anything your arms could actually do, you end up getting a bunch stronger. But initially, yeah, you might have to take a little cut, but that's just because now, you're actually distributing Freaking the load, right? Bryce Lewis was a beast when we trained. I mean, he's just a beast all around. He's just super strong. But he was such a beast when we did back with him. Remember that, Andrew? Yeah. His form on everything. He 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 had also kind of tweaked his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he had to keep his back real flat, and he had to actually go like a little bit lighter. But his form on everything, we were just like, how is he using that weight with that form? He's Freaking such an athlete. Like we were in the Dominican, and he's like, I think I'm a flip. <laughs> Like 240 pounds of him, and he hadn't done it in yeah, a while. Like, and just, I'm like, whoa. Like, yeah, he's like, I used to play volleyball. I'm like, yeah, right. He's <laughs> another guy that's built like a, the letter H. Yeah. 
Okay, so up here. So there, and I just, just down. Yeah, see, uh, with uh, mm. people who powerless, they got good scapular control. They know what's going on here. There you mm. go. And then once you feel like, okay, I've, I've really stressed it out, it's moving and sliding the way it should across the ribcage, then you start to, yeah. What I like to show these guys a lot of is like, I usually tell them, you know, we're, we're getting in here, but we're not so much down in here. Yes, <laughs> yes. More here. Not so much here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can arch this to the point where the muscle's actually shortened a little bit and mm. it's not getting that stretch. I totally violated him. Yeah. Super violated him. So you kind of you kind of arch through here a little bit? Yes. There you go. So you should feel a lot of it in like the lower part of your scapula, but your lats are going to be doing a lot of the work. You think for a lot of movements, you know, things like a lunge or movements like this, um, even some movements for the hamstring and stuff. You think it's important to get a stretch, get a good, you know, good full range of motion on some of these movements? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely, that in range is, is, is important. If, if you can do it, you know, obviously. Yeah. There's certain movements that, you know, at this point, I can't do with the full stretch anymore. Right. But if I can, I will, yeah. And bodybuilding, I mean, you might as well kind of get things from a bunch of different angles. So there's going to be some times where maybe you're doing shorter reps, yeah. right? And yes. there's some times yeah. where you're, you're kind of going. Yeah, especially with the back, man. There's so much zigzaggy stuff going on there. What about like your feet? You want your feet out in front or underneath here? Yeah, I kind of like it in front because it makes your lower back more neutral. You know, you're oh. less likely to, to arch. Oh, I feel that. So let the shoulders go. Let them slide up and then down. Man, that's hard. So last minute, those elbow flexors come in. Try a few like that. Yeah, and it's giving you more and more every time. Do you want to come down in front or let your elbows go out? Like, what do you think? Yeah, for this one, definitely to the side. And, you know, kind of like pressing, if they're a little closer, you just have more control over your, your shoulders in general. Oh, I see. See, yeah, that looks way better. You're, all the back is, this is what's leading, and those just follow up. Every rep felt purposeful. That felt really good. But, you know, speaking of, like, just, like, you know, like, stretching and, and whatnot, we forget that, you know, we think of volume, and we think of adding sets, adding reps, but range of motion, that's a big, that's volume. Yeah. You know, if you're cutting down your, your range of motion, there's just less work being done. Right. So. And that's why guys like Hani, they got their system where he'll do, you know, kind of like 21s. You know, he'll do 777. Seven, seven. Yeah. But he'll do seven, like if he's doing a cable crossover, he'll do seven here, seven down here, seven up here, but they're all short. Yeah, yeah. Just like you said, so he's accounting for In a the range of way. motion being yeah. shorter and getting the volume that's necessary for that shorter range of motion. And you know, one thing about the pecs, I, I used to be just, you know, I just press, but that's. There's only a few people that can get away with that and they have a fully developed chest. There's just so much yeah. muscle fibers going in different directions that you probably want right. some variation there for sure. Um, I think this next one, I'm gonna take it to the house. All right. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a set of 20 with maybe about one rep left in the tank, maybe yep. two. And then I'm gonna take five deep breaths and I'm gonna go in there and get anywhere between five to three reps. Okay. Five deep breaths and then repeat that. And I'm gonna do a total of four to five clusters. Gotcha. And this would be the equivalent of doing, because those four to five rep mini sets, they're technically like, I guess you can describe them as like rep 15 to 20. You're just right back uh, in there. So we did five sets to 20 in a relatively short amount of time. Right. And that, and another thing that it teaches people is like, to, cause you want to be close to failure. That is a big mm -hmm. part of like muscle growth, but it teaches you to be at the right proximity. Cause you can and go so gonna... hard that you just cut down your volume drastically. And we're going to nail this just like probably once and move on to a different exercise. Yes, probably. absolutely. Yep. 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 Yeah. That's technically five sets of 20. Yeah. So. All right. Are we going to lower the weight at all or no? Uh, Wait, the weight's going to stay the same the whole time? It's going to stay the same. Yeah, okay. through, through all of them. Yep, Got it. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Get this first one going. I'm kind of interested to see, yeah. see how he's going to get through it.
That was about, I think, 19. Bad accounting. Yep. All right. Get back in there. Come on. Come on, get after it now. Stay with it. There you go. Hurry, focus on, on those laps. So five deep breaths. This is a little little rest pause ish, huh? You want to get in there right before you're ready, like just a smidge, usually. I see. So he just banged out about a set of twenty, and then he's doing a couple extra sets after after he gets close to failure on each one. So he's taking a couple breaths here, about five five breaths, and he'll get right back into it again. I don't know how he's doing this because I just used like 110 pounds and almost died. So he's got 150 on there and he only weighs 10 pounds. There we go. Keep going, come on. Yep. Ooh, I definitely only got one more. You can make it, buddy. Come on, bud. Ooh. Get him in there. Yep, there we go. Come on. Let's do three more. Here we go. Come on, go for it. Give you a little boost. Squeeze. Come on, two more. Squeeze. Yep. Way to work. Way to work. Ooh. Nothing Ooh, left in the tank. Good job, man. All right. Ooh. All right. One thing I like about this kind of stuff is, uh, yeah, there goes the jacket. The jacket just, your jacket just turned into a microwave. Ooh. One thing I like about stuff like this is like, yeah, you can get like excited for it, you can get like hyped up, but it's not the same as that that one or two or three or five rep set, yeah, where you yeah. can get really amped. We can turn on a bunch of music and you can kind of get a good feel off of that, and you can have a good pre workout for this. It's like, no, yeah, it's yeah. all like, it is, it it's, is, it's in way deep. It's so slow and tedious. You gotta, you gotta try to find it on your own. You can't like get anything external. All right, wish me luck, Instagram. Dude, so I think for you, like My six biceps. breaths, six breaths. My biceps are dying. Whew. It's just a bigger system you're working with, so a little longer. Bigger, less efficient system. <laughs> there you go, too. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, there we go. So you're right back at that grindy part, you know? Yep, I feel I see what you mean. No one's died from this? Mm, no. <laughs> Halfway. I'm gonna let this to spin, okay? Yep, so we get some good reps in there. Five sets basically. Yeah. It's brutal. 
so much easier to do, especially if you have a lot of big four lifts in right. your program. Yeah. So maybe if you were to do like a, if you did like a deadlift workout and you moved over into this, you'd maybe do one set here, maybe one more exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, that would be it. Because, you know, do you really want to do five sets of pull downs and then five sets of rows after some deadlifts? Right. You can, but it might be shitty work. But if you know you're just going to be here for like three minutes or so, yeah. you can get locked in for three minutes. Yeah. You know? Yep. Cool. Um, what happens if you sweat? Do you leave the gym? I don't sweat. It's weird. So, are we in the same? Like, I'm on 18. 16. Oh, I'll come down. The more stuff people grab, the worse it gets. So this looks like a total mom exercise, but you know, once you get into it, it's, <laughs> it's really difficult. Yeah, um, so the issue with most, so for example, if you were bench pressing and someone tapped it, you can't count that. Right. Right? It's like, no, I, I didn't get that. So with rows, <laughs> people will self-assist with other muscle groups. So if you look at someone saying, say doing a barbell row, they'll like the ankle, the knee, the hip, and right. you're redistributing load to places that you don't want to. Right. So with this, we're taking away all of that. So you're just dangling. Damn. So you know how pull-ups, chin-ups, uh -huh. it's like first rep, best set. Yeah. And then they just do that. And yeah. that's because it's it's hard to cheat unless like you're, you know, Hitting tipping or something. Yeah. Yeah. So with this, we're gonna take away the ability to do that. And I think also, like if you are a strength athlete, you need to save your lower back for the stuff that matters to you the most. Yeah. So with this, there's nothing there. Right. And what you're gonna find out too, is that because you're dangling, you're just in a better position to lead with your back. So we're talking about the row, and you know how uh, a lot of bodybuilders, they suggest you kind of swing this way? Right. The issue to me with that is, I think they're confusing the fact that when you do this, you're no longer breaking with your elbow flexor first. Right. But what you're doing is, and it, it, the assumption is that like I'm getting more lat. Right. But gravity points down. I, I can take a 200 pound dumbbell and swing it and, and do this. So this isn't really doing anything other mm -hmm. than it's delaying what this does. All right. So with a row, you want to break with your scapula first. And if you do that, you'll see that it feels the same and if not a little bit better. And you're actually, you're leading with the muscle groups that you're intending to use. Right. And in this case, it's, it's the upper back. Some people talk about getting, their, getting your elbows back behind your body. Is yeah. that kind of what you're a little bit in reference to? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, getting your elbows right around the midline, I'd say. Yeah. Kind of like with a, a bench press. Right. Um, but the key is you want to break with your scapula first. What That's does that the look first like thing in a row? So with a row, it's, and then you follow yeah. through. So how we were doing it this way, only this time it's, right. And you're gonna see that as soon as you start dangling from that bar or ring. Oh, I'm gonna be incredibly weak at this, so I'm actually excited oh, to do you it. You are, <laughs> we're gonna probably have to adjust it. You're probably gonna yeah. get 12 reps with this. So yeah. for the mile rep sets that we're doing, a good rule is your clusters, they're going to be about a quarter of whatever the activation set was. So if you did a set of 12, you're probably gonna do, help me out, help me out with the math, like three or four reps, right? right? Yeah, and that's what all the clusters are gonna be. So yeah. I assume you're gonna get about 12. Um, it's a lot harder than it looks. It looks so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go first? Um, I'll lead this one. All right. And then, and then we'll die. Yeah. Whew, it's been a minute. And we just did that thing, so. I can hold your feet for you if you want. Ooh, key, key. Um, I like going thumbless. Okay. Because what it does is, what did you call that, like on a bench press when people do the Suicide. The, the, well, no, not the, like oh, this. Oh, the gay pterodactyl. <laughs> the, people do that with their rows all the time. Oh, like, okay. if your wrist is crooked, there's no way you're generating the right amount yeah, of force. Like, what yeah. are you doing, man? What is this? If you do this, <laughs> you're going to see that your, your wrists have to stay straight. You, you don't have the ability to do that stuff. We should right. we actually need to make a gay pterodactyl. <laughs> 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 all right. Just a bit. In terms of where you row to, it's probably going to follow what your bench press does, the position where yeah. you're your strongest. All right. Oh, damn. There you go. Looking smooth. So 
maybe a cue for someone who hasn't done this before is to almost try to pull the chest up a little bit too, huh? Yeah. Like it looks like for you, you don't really maybe have to think about that because you got your shoulder, your shoulder game's on point. You guys see how that ST is coming up and back a little bit? This is the exact way that you'd want to bench press too. A lot of people fold as the weight gets closer to him, to them. As you can see, he's getting tighter as the bar is getting closer to him. That's the exact same thing you'd want to do on a bench press. Ooh, which makes this really valuable if that's yeah. one of your interests. Ooh, all right. Take a dude that can row 315 row. Yeah. Put him on this. He's like, oh, maybe that does it. <laughs> yeah. The right yeah. Body parts. You notice as he comes down, his lats are, are winging out quite a bit. I think that's an important uh, part of this uh, movement. So he's still he's letting his shoulders go. And then he's getting his, as he was saying, scapulas retracted. It's basically just pulling your shoulder blade into the socket. And that's exactly also what you want to do on the bench too. You want to screw your shoulder blades into the bench press. And you can't figure out that ability until you're able to do some of what he's doing here. Okay. Ooh. All right. He's got those drug tested shorts on too. Ooh. Oh, check out the fake Nikes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no one has those. That's great. Ooh. All right, so there's a chance you might get 10 reps. Um, and if we do 10, I might get one. <laughs> we'll just do clusters yeah, of two. Get down there. Yep. Oh. So we'll adjust as we go. Um, right. You want it to follow the same path as your bench for the most part. Uh, grip doesn't matter too much. Just go with where you're coming. Whatever, yeah, whatever you're strong with. Grinding now. How many was that? That was 12. Okay. Threes and fours, okay? Threes and fours. You get in trouble, squeeze your glutes. It's like when you do any big movement. Everything tense, you're just gonna be able to produce more force across everything. What I like about this bottom portion is that you automatically can yeah, feel how that yes. works, which I think would be a huge tool for people for the bench Right pressing. across the upper back. Yep. It lights up. Squeeze those glutes. I want you to squeeze them for me. <laughs> <sighs> That'll get anyone to tense up, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Get tight, get tight. The old oil check. Don't work. <sighs> Holy shit. <sighs> I wasn't sure if I would feel my back that much on this, but I, I do, I it's feel it quite a bit. Your, your back has to be the first thing that breaks. Your arms are just not in a position to do that. Yeah. You go thumbless on this one, see if yep. it does it. Ooh. 
There we go. Is that it? That's it. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's like your body, like people see this and it doesn't look hardcore, but it's like your body doesn't understand exercise. It's just movements. Yeah. You know? And this is oh, difficult. one of the best rows you can do. Oh, it's a stain down here. Okay. Oh, sweat angel. Look at that. Hoop stain. I have to set up reverse bands on here. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't do a bench row or a seal row, you can do that. And same thing, your lower back is think, chill. Do you think for power lifters, like maybe they should be careful with how much like back they're doing? Like, cause we're taught like you know you got to deadlift and then you got to yeah. do rdls and then you got to do uh bent over rows and then you got to do like a seated row like yeah maybe yeah. that's too much for us huh you know what like, all the squats just, and everything you just want a horizontal row like uh, my variation is uh, for my back i maybe have three or four exercises and that's it right because you want to pick the ones that fit you the ones that you feel working the muscle group and get really really good at them and if you have too much variation you're never going to, you know, master that movement. That's true, huh? So as time goes on, you might see that you just condense into the movements that you can progress with, you feel, and that don't hurt you. That's super important. Right. So. And then it, w even within those three or four exercises, you're not doing them all in one day. You're picking like maybe one or two or yeah, something like yeah, that to yeah. focus on, right? Yeah. So that's, that's another thing. It's like the frequency. I think powerlifting's benefited from like higher frequency training. Same thing yeah. with bodybuilding. Yeah, it's just, huge. it's... It's so like, think of it as like studying, right? If you can study 10 hours a week, like can scatter that throughout the week, mm. or you, you can do it on Friday night, which one's going to yield better results, right? It's probably going to be, you know, scattering it across. Right. For you, how many times a week do you usually get to something? Is it like, is it anywhere between like five to, or, or one, one to two times a week, something like that? Um, I'd say two, two to four times. So four times wow. for the stuff that is, um, that needs more work and then two for the stuff that you know does quite yeah. well with with lower volume um i could probably do more but it's right. it's I mean, you remember that small off program that everyone was running mm -hmm. like it was just destroying Squat people every day yeah. yeah but like people would make a lot of progress with it but then they'd break soon after yeah so i could probably get better results if i had more volume and and just more overall work but i'd break at some point so it's like yeah. i'd rather it's like the speed limit man it's like break it here and there but like you know get back to where you need yeah. to be when you kind of get caught up yeah right so the spreading of fatigue is spread it out throughout the week, throughout the month. Yeah, yeah. I think one thing that as bodybuilders, we're fortunate to, to have it this way is that you can really select the movements. Like with, you know, with power lifters, sometimes it's like, hey, you know, I'm a great squatter and bench presser, but that deadlift, man, right? Um, as a bodybuilder, it's like you're not limited to these specific movements. Like maybe, you know, like this row might be like the row that everyone else is doing, but you don't feel it. Like, so I think in regards to choosing your movements that best fit you for specifically muscle growth. Again, it's movements where, and my buddy Ben Escrow, like he, he put this perfectly when he said, you wanna find movements that, where it feels like it's you against the weight only and not you against the weight against your own body, right? Uh, you find those movements, you stick to those for a long time, you add reps, you add weight over time without a change in technique, and that's basically, that's basically how you grow. Um, on the flip side of that, and this is something that actually, um, I, I went on the gram yesterday and I talked about this. It's like if there's one fundamental thing, if there's like one meal that I think is super important when it comes to recovery, it's going to be, we get a lot of recovery pre-sleep. So I think a lot of folks, they go to bed like without a protein feeding. So to me, even if it puts you over your calories or it kind of breaks whatever system you're using just a smidge, I think it's totally worth it to have a nice, slow digesting protein, whether it be casein or uh, if you have meat in your diet, you can have some meat and have that pre-bed and uh, it's, it's something that goes with you as you go through that recovery phase, which again, sleep, we talked about how important sleep is. Yeah, so yeah, that, that uh, protein feeding right before bed, super important and a lot of people forget that. Cool. That's it. Some training with Alberto Nunez. Got in some uh, back exercises. They were, they weren't hard to do. Um, but the intensity was there. The intensity was difficult. I think you guys should give this workout a try. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.